I'm Dan Sample with the George Memorial Library, and today I'll be talking about The Legend of the Catwoman and Knock Knock. Stories about the Thompson Spottoms Catwoman have circulated for many years in Fort Bend County. It's located in the central east part of the county and is about 13 miles from the county seat of Richmond, Texas. According to the legend, she is a sleek bodied woman with dark flowing hair and her hands and feet have claws. She also has a cat's face with whiskers and the upper canines or fangs. Stories circulated in the area that she has devoured chickens and at times local ranchers have complained about losing cattle. One story from the mid to late 1980s involved a group of about five high school friends. It was early in the summer and the group met out in a field in or around the Thompson's Bottoms area. It became one of their stopping grounds after one of the gang got their driver's license and had access to an older hand-me-down car. They used it when they had no money or interest in hanging out at the local mall. Since the grass and weeds were not regularly cut, they would bring folding chairs or old blankets to lounge around on and chat while drinking their preferred beverages. There was also an old small section of gym bleachers out in the field. Of course, the old wooden seats were splintered and warped so not very suitable for sitting. No one knew why or how it got there, just that it seems to have always been there. As it got later, the group decided to call it a night. Besides, the bugs were getting out of control. As they got up and gathered their things, one of the women in the group picked up a blanket and wrapped it around her like a cape or cloak. They joked that if anyone saw them, they'd be mistaken for cult members or something more sinister. As they walked the narrow path to their car, a couple of members of the party felt that there was something odd about the night. The crickets and frogs out by the bayou didn't seem to be quite as noisy as usual. And a couple of times, as one of the flashlights swept the overgrown area, a couple of yellow lights reflected back. Each time it was written off as a small animal. But the group got quieter and looked and listened for anything out of the ordinary. Even the resident skeptic felt the hair on the back of his neck stand to attention. As they got closer to the car, their walking pace quickened. Some of the group heard rustling just off the path they were on, and one shouted, Let's go! The group then ran to the car. As they got closer, a low guttural growl was heard next to them. They got to the car, quickly unlocked it, and dove inside. As soon as the doors were closed, something jumped on the roof and clawed and scratched at it for what seemed like a long time. Suddenly, it hopped off and disappeared into the night. The car started and the group sped off back towards Richmond. After some time, most of the group chalked it up to the overactive imaginations. But was it? The second story involves a group who would occasionally drive to the Thompson's Bottoms area in their Jeep. On this occasion, it was dusk. And even though the headlights were on, it was at that time where they really weren't much help. The group would cruise on the back roads, calling out for the Catwoman and making the usual ruckus and cat calls. As they drove, they came to a sharp turn in the road and noticed something near the tree line. It was dark and hard to make out. It could have been a large dog or even a deer. As they passed, the creature stood up on its hind legs 
and watched the car as it slowly moved past it. As they passed the creature, it ran towards the car and banged into its side. The jeep accelerated, then left the creature behind. After they got back to Richmond, the driver pulled over to check out his jeep. It looked okay except for what appeared to be scratch marks on the passenger side door. After that, the group ceased their Catwoman search parties. Another version of the Catwoman story was recorded by John C. Allwright. He was a Fort Bend native and history enthusiast. After his retirement, he entertained both young and old with stories from The Bend. In his book, Fort Bend Ghost Stories, the eponymous Catwoman is an actual human woman living in a log cabin near East Columbia on the banks of the Brazos River. One day, she found some baby wildcats that had been abandoned by their mother, so she raised them along with her traditional house cats. The animals bred and the offspring had distinct vertical stripes which indicated they were not purebred wildcats. The cat woman roamed the countryside from East Columbia to Booth. She would often be seen gathering fruits, nuts, and edible leaves to eat. Many local residents would also supplement her diet with excess wild game and meat that was getting old. She was known to take in any cat that she came across, and once they died, she would bury them in her yard. After the Catwoman died, Allwright talked to Stella, a longtime resident of Thompson's, and she reported that the locals often told stories about her around Halloween. The story goes that she would climb trees, then jump out and scare people as they wandered by. She also related that she was nervous about driving in the area at night. She had heard stories that the Catwoman would get on the road and force the drivers to stop. It was never reported what happened after, and no one ever heard of the Catwoman harming anyone. It has been said that the Catwoman is buried in her yard amongst her cats, though it is unknown who buried her. Others say that they have seen her ghost caring for stray cats still make her their way onto her former property. I'll let you decide which version of the story to believe. Back in 1912, the Richmond Barbershop on Morton Avenue was built and opened for business in 1913. The building is about 20 feet wide and 60 feet long. It had three barber chairs and behind it were the living quarters. At some point, Homer Sharp became the proprietor, moved into the back and ran the shop. It was a cold February night and Homer had retired for the evening. A fairly heavy snow fell which was unusual for the area. He sat in his old chair, reading the newspaper, when he was startled by a knock on the back door. He thought it odd that someone would be knocking so late on such a cold and nasty night. He convinced himself that he just imagined it and went back to reading the paper when he heard the knock again. He put the paper down and started to get up when he was suddenly overcome with a feeling of foreboding. The knock didn't seem to be from someone in panic or fear. It was an even, mildly light rap he heard. He sat back down in his chair and nervously rocked back and forth as he looked around the room and out the window. He glanced at his pocket watch and realized that it was much later than he thought.
When he awoke the next morning, he looked out the window and saw that the snow had stopped falling. Also, what had stuck to the ground was now mostly melted off, and there were only patches of snow remaining. It was later that day, after Homer had opened the shop and customers along with the usual others entered, that he found out a cowboy was found frozen to death behind a house on nearby Jackson Street. Everyone he related his story to about the previous night felt that the Phantom Knocker and the Cowboy were one and the same. It turned out the Cowboy had been a customer of Homer's several years earlier. Whenever it was an unusually cold night, he would hear the same light, even knocks on the back door. He was never able to summon the courage to go to the door and see what, if anything, was on the other side. 